Hello, and thanks for joining us for Arts 24. Today, former Victoria's secret angel and muse to the likes of Jean-Paul Gaultier and Karl Lagerfeld, Letitia Castor has successfully made the transition from modelling to cinema. She began acting a decade ago, often appearing in movies directed by her husband, Louis Garrel. This week, her new film, Le Bonheur et pour demain, or An English Happiness is for Tomorrow, has been released. It's directed by her mother-in-law. Louise Dupont has been chatting to Letitia Castor. Tu voulais faire quoi quand tu étais petite, toi Tu voulais être aimée d'un homme que j'aime, avoir des enfants, m'occuper d'eux. C'est réussi. T'étais avec qui Avec moi-même. Fais gaffe, Sophie. Leticia Casta, hello. Let's talk about your new film, Le Bonheur est pour demain, or And Tomorrow Will Be Happy in English. It's a movie about love in prison. You play Sophie, a woman who falls in love with a man just before he's sentenced to 30 years in prison. What did you like about the script and the role? It's about breaking free from constraints expressing yourself through your body. It's a sensual, raw, animalistic film. This is a character who gives selflessly. And it's about love, what we're willing to do for love. Sophie is willing to go very far, it seems. That's what passion is. We take risks, we get hurt, we fall, and the film's title, And Tomorrow Will Be Happy, is a bit ironic. And Damien Bonnard, who plays Claude, says, what else could possibly go wrong? I won't spoil the film, but... Yes, and she met this man before he went to prison, and she wants to see him free again, so she doesn't understand. Oh, merde! On la récupérera plus tard. T'as peur qu'on nous voit ensemble au café? This film is directed by Brigitte C, who has quite a unique story, as she herself married a prisoner. Several, in fact. She worked in prison, she held theater workshops and so on. How did her personal story influence the film? Did she discuss it with you? How did she approach things? That's part of who Brigitte is, and Brigitte is sort of the character. She's a very genuine woman who has loved men who weren't necessarily straightforward. But she really loved them, and they loved her. Her way of telling a love story is beautiful and powerful. It's definitely a woman's film, I think. Of course. And another woman who shines in the film is Beatrice Dahl. She plays your mother-in-law, Claude's mother, the prisoner. Were you excited to meet her? What was it like? I love Beatrice Dahl. I loved her right away, even before I met her, from what I knew of her. She's a magnificent actress, and I wanted to work with her. And then there's something, how should I say it? Even though our paths are different, we have things in common. We both built our film careers slowly, and we're sort of self-taught. Yes, because neither of you were in the business before. Ils ont fait baver, Claude. Non, c'est mes fils qui ont bavé avec moi. Et toi, tu veux quoi? Je veux le revoir. Speaking of the mother-daughter-in-law relationship, Brigitte C is also the mom of your partner, Louis Garel. <laughs> it's worth a few therapy sessions, for sure. Actually, I love her beyond that. We have a real connection, which is rare. And when I arrived on set, I didn't have this pressure of thinking I have to make her like me. I was free from all that, and I immediately got into the film. When you choose your roles, what do you look for in the characters? Nuance and complexity, because that's the way life is. And the older I get, the more I want things to be murky. Next, Beyoncé, Bjork and Lady Gaga are among her fans. The Dutch fashion designer Iris van Herpen has created a world of her own, blending technology, biology and haute couture. 
An exhibition in Paris at the Musée des Arts Décoratives is celebrating her work. Jean-Emile Jamin has more. Haute couture pieces that are out of this world. For a long time now, I have been merging the more traditional techniques of craftsmanship with the more modern techniques like the printing, laser cutting and the molding. It really brings the couture craftsmanship into the here and now and also in our near future. Iris van Herpen has been a pioneer of futuristic fabrications. From Beyoncé on her Renaissance world tour to Lady Gaga and Bjork, the stars have quite literally aligned. At just 39 years old, the Dutch designer's pieces have been sent to stage. This dress, Crystallization, was designed by Iris in 2010 at the beginning of her career, three years after opening her atelier in Amsterdam. It's the first 3D printed dress ever made for Haute Couture. She's so ahead of her time. Still. Organza, blown glass. No element is off limits when it comes to crafting her sculptural pieces. These are dresses we're not at all used to seeing people wear. It really reminds me of Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings. The environment has been an inspiration from the get-go. With a teenage Iris, collecting nature samples, like a botanist. Iris van Herpen grew up in nature, in a village, by a river. In all of her collections, or nearly all of them, she references nature, from the cosmos to the ocean, the plants, or even the animal kingdom, or just humans. She came to hone her craftswomanship with the late legendary designer Alexander McQueen before spreading her wings and launching her own atelier at just 23 years old. It is Van Herpen's formula for blending fashion and science has paid off, becoming a regular feature at Paris's Haute Couture Week. Next, going to museum or gallery in 2024 means you can do things like swim with whales, hang out with dinosaurs and walk in the steps of Harry Potter. More and more museums are offering a virtual reality experience. Let's find out some more with Aurore Dupuis. A dive into the adventures of Tintin, a virtual reality tour of Van Gogh's paintings or an immersive experience of Vivaldi's art. This year, brace yourselves for some great art shows. It was awesome. It feels like the images are coming toward us, and sometimes we get drawn into the show. For visitors, it's an increasingly realistic virtual world. At the Natural History Museum in Paris, vanished worlds seem to have come back to life. Imagine a journey nearly four billion years into the past. It's a bit scary. I like it. The Larive family gets into the game. They have 45 minutes to stroll through some breathtaking landscapes with some strange animals. Everything is virtual, but it certainly feels real. It was incredible, mind-blowing. It's extraordinary, and we actually learnt a lot. But we're captivated by so many things by the landscapes that we just want to get back in there and listen to the great explanations. It's the first time a French museum offers a virtual experience of this scale. The designers created models of species that no one had ever seen in 3D before. And today, we present them to our visitors in environments that are close to reality. Fast-paced technologies are on display at this fair dedicated to museums of the future. No matter where the visitors are, they will soon have unlimited access to artworks from around the world. You can um, see the object very clearly, you can 
see the details, you know, in a painting, for example. Soon, thanks to holograms, you'll be able to see the resurrection of Nefertiti, queen of ancient Egypt. The museum offers all the newest technologies. The sole aim of these technologies is to allow better access to collections, to better explain what's happening in the museum and to make it more accessible. And it's already starting to bear fruit. Most French museums have seen a rise in attendance last year. And that brings us to the end of the show. Just before we go, every other year, Paris's Chaillot Theatre hosts a series of shows devoted to flamenco dancing. Some of the greatest names in the discipline, dancers, singers and guitarists, are performing. We'll leave you with a taster of what's on offer until the 11th of February, and it's well worth a visit. Thanks for watching. See you next time. South Korea, as the number of marriages plummets, many men are going to Vietnam to find the one. Pre-arranged meetings can lead to weddings in under 48 hours. <laughs> but for these women, the future is not always rosy. Most of the foreign, they expect a lot of things in Korea. In reality, everything is changed. Watch South Korea, for better or for worse, in Reporters on France 24 and France24.com.